I'm Taylor Zarzer with Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang. We're glad to be here at Faro Field on this beautiful Saturday morning. We mentioned that win over number one Alabama last Saturday night stench, a signature win for Jimbo Fisher. But before that, they barely beat Colorado and they lost to Arkansas in Mississippi State. So who are these fighting Texas Aggies? Well, they're, they're definitely a work in progress because coming into the season, many thought probably the second best team in the SEC West, but you just mentioned two division losses, back-to-back -back weeks, but then you beat the number one team in the nation that you also share the division with. Who is Texas A&M right now? I think we find out a lot today, especially offensively, versus Missouri and the defense has struggled so far this season. I'm sure you would agree. Zach Calzada's got to keep playing like he did last Saturday night as the quarterback of the Aggies. For more on him, let's go to the field in Alyssa Lane. Yeah, guys, it's been really cool to watch the way Zach Calzada has won over his teammates' confidence over the last couple of weeks. I talked to Texas A&M defensive back Leon O'Neill this week about his progress over the last couple of weeks. And he very eloquently put it like this, just like in life and football, you have to fail. He said Calzada embraced those failures. He went back to work to clean them up, to figure out what he needs to do differently. He added that that moment beating Alabama last week was huge for the entire team because of all the work that Calzada has put in. They were so happy for him. The way they've rallied around him at this midway point of the season has been really cool. He was sensational last Saturday night, no denying that. Today, Texas A&M goes up against a Missouri Tigers team that has been up and down in Eli Drinkwitz two seasons, eight wins, eight, lo eight losses. The offense has been humming, but the defense has had all sorts of adversity. You know, they've had a lot of folks flowing in and out, identity as well. They've been kind of trying on new things. There were three down front a couple of games ago, and they've reintroduced this competitive edge in practice. You have to earn your playing time during the week. If you want to get out there on Saturdays, you got to show us Monday through Friday. We've seen some new faces inserted in the lineup for this Missouri defense. They're hoping for a strong turnaround as they face Texas A&M on the heels of a signature victory for Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies a week ago. We'll have to wait a minute to see what Mizzou's defense looks like today because A&M won the toss and deferred, so Mizzou will get the, first, get the football first. Caden Davis will kick off. Chris Abrams drain who is dangerous back there. Abrams Drain returned one 100 yards for a touchdown against Tennessee two weeks ago. This is the 16th meeting between these two schools. A&M leads eight to seven. First time they've played in seven years. And so Connor Basilak and the Missouri Tigers offense will start at the 25, Basilak Throws it around, found 10 different receivers last week versus North Texas Stinch. This is his 16th career start. Veteran now, you know, a guy that's settled into that leadership role. You see that C on his jersey, a captain. 1,690 yards has been very efficient so far this season. How much does he feed one of the best backs in the league? Tyler Beatty throws it to him on the first play, and Beatty picks up five. He's the first ever Missouri running back with a thousand career rushing yards and receiving yards and you see the threat he is not only carrying the football but catching it. Great way to get him a ball and get touches. Look for Missouri to try to get that ball on the perimeter including to their running backs either by formation or running backs out of the backfield in the passing game. Boy did Beatty go off last week over 200 yards rushing three touchdowns second and five quick throw it's dropped as chance looper was the intended receiver it was thrown a bit behind him but that's a ball looper should have caught we were talking about Beatty and what he's done number one in the sec with 12 touchdowns so far this season on a third and five another quick throw and this time it's looper making the catch and moving the chains Missouri quick to the line off of the incompletion to Looper. As you mentioned, a little bit off target, but that time they used that bunch formation on the right side to run almost like a pick or rub routes. Very difficult for the defense to sift through in coverage. First and 10, flea flicker. Basilak, nothing open down the field. He pumps, and now he'll throw it away into the Missouri bench. Good pressure by the Aggies there as McKinley Jackson was in the backfield. You know, one of the hallmarks of Eli Drinkwitz's offensive philosophy 
are gadget plays, gimmicks. Coaches don't like that term. But you see a lot of that, flea flickers, end of rounds, reverses, especially early in games. This was especially early in this contest. Usually pops up on the second or third offensive possession. Toski Dove flashing across your screen to the top. Basilak dumps it off, and this is Kiki Chisholm with wide open space, and he's pushed out near the Aggie bench into Texas A&M territory. It's a pickup of 16 for the guy that appears to be Basilak's favorite target. Definitely his go-to. I think maybe among the receivers for Missouri that he feels comfortable with and has chemistry, but check the flag. Illegal shift. Offense number 86. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Ken Williamson, today's referee, announcing that Toski Dove Committed a foul there, so wipe away the big game from Chisholm. Toski Dove, whenever we talk to this coaching staff, they mention he is the most consistent. Talk about Kiki Chisholm. They've already tried to get the ball to Chance Looper, two targets for him, one completion. But Toski Dove has been their most consistent performer at receiver, but this time the procedure penalty hurting Missouri off of what have been a first down. Now second and 15. Intercepted, thrown right to the Aggies as Jalen Jones goes back the other way. And he's gonna stay on his feet down to the 21 yard line. That was a big miss by Basilak right into the arms of Jalen Jones. I have to think that Basilak was expecting a comeback route on the boundary here. Because otherwise, it goes right to Jones. 17 for AM with a big, quick change momentum shifter early in this game. Boy, what a penalty. That time on Toski Dove would have been a first down going the other direction instead of pick going the other way. Now it's Calzada with a short field after the historic performance by him last Saturday night. To the ground, it's Spiller and Isaiah inside the 10, down to the nine. That's what he did so well against Alabama last Saturday night. The middle of that offensive line stench performed so well. The offensive front, I think, they're starting to figure out the ingredients, who the guys are that they want out there. Now, interestingly, they've got Kenyon Green, who was at left tackle last week for Alabama. He's in there at left guard. You would typically do that if you're looking for more push in the run game early on with the carry for Spiller. Spiller again. This time he's tripped up in the backfield as Isaiah McGuire gets the tackle for loss. It'll be second down. Yeah, Jimbo Fisher told us yesterday when I said, where's Kenyon Green starting, left tackle or left guard? He said, keep your eyes open. It'll be different on almost a play-by-play -play basis as 55 Green can play all over that offensive line. Second and goal outside the 10. Inside pass, inside the five, down to the three. Damon Demas makes the catch short of the goal line. It'll be third and goal. Well, the eight catch on the season for Damon Demas. Kind of had his coming out party versus New Mexico. Typically a deep threat. And you see on a third and goal opportunity. And Texas A&M has struggled yes. in the red zone to convert touchdowns this year. Only nine of their 19 trips have resulted in a touchdown score four times. They've come away with no points at all. That's Weidermeyer next to Calzada in front of Spiller, and now we get a whistle. Texas Stadium, first time out this half. Jimbo Fisher came sprinting down the sideline to get the officials' attentions to call that timeout. Wants to make sure, as we just mentioned, this is an area of the field Texas A&M has struggled in. To make sure that they can find a way to capitalize on it. Think about you open up, you want to be able to come away with a touchdown on the heels of the interception. Short field, you want six. Just a second ago, let's see what got Texas A&M into this position when Jalen Jones 
picked off this pass from Basilak. Just a wild misfire by the Mizzou quarterback. I have to think there's confusion in the route. Like Daniel Parker was in that area, but as you mentioned, really it was mostly Aggie defenders in the proximity of that throw. Stench, Anaya Smith, Devon A. Chain, Isaiah Spiller, Jalen Weidemeyer, those four guys, they have 13 of AM's 16 offensive touchdowns. Let's see if one of those guys ends up with the football here. Weidemeyer's in front of Spiller. Now running to the top of your screen in the slot. Calzada looking his way. Fires easy touchdown to Smith. 14 of 17 have gone to those four. Ball was inside. If the Caleb Evans doesn't slip right there, that could have been a dangerous throw for Zach Calzada as it is. The Aggies able to capitalize on the early turnover by Missouri. Now Seth Small, 28-yard game winner last week against the Tide. He's been perfect with extra points so far this season. Mizzou turns it over, and the Aggies make them pay. Texas A&M up first in Mizzou. Temperature in the mid-50s here today in Columbia, Missouri. Feels like football weather on a beautiful day between number 21 Texas A&M and Mizzou. Tigers with the early turnover and the Aggies with the early touchdown pass from Calzada to Anaya Smith. Aggies just six and seven on the road during Jimbo Fisher's tenure as the Aggie head coach. This is their first true road game of the year, although they did play Colorado and Denver and played Arkansas in Arlington, Texas earlier this season. It's interesting what Jimbo told us yesterday, Stench, when we were talking to him. He mentioned this to the media earlier this week too. He said, quote, you don't want to be an underdog. We have to learn these aren't upsets like the one they had against Alabama. Only Texas A&M can get upset. We have to get to that mindset, Jimbo said. Yeah, they're not quite there. I mean, you think about 2020 and how they narrowly missed the college football playoff. And then, of course, this year, stumbling through their West Division schedule thus far. Obviously, riding the ship last week versus Bama, can they maintain it? Basilak fakes to Beatty and just dumps it off to Nico Hay. And there's not much doing there. There's a couple of Aggies, including Damani Richardson, Read him immediately, it's second down. How important is it, Stench, for Mizzou's offense to stay on the field today given all the adversity they face defensively? Yeah, that's a big piece of it, right? Knowing that AM is looking to get that ground game going and knowing that your own defense in Missouri's has struggled to stop rushing offenses. It's Beatty. Again, not much doing. Pick up a one on first down and another one yarder on second down, Antonio Johnson. Sophomore from East St. Louis on the tackle, the leading tackler for the Aggies. Now third and eight for Eli Drinkwitz's offense. They have been terrific on third down this season, 53%, number one in the Southeastern Conference. And into the backfield again, Tyler Beatty in the slot at the bottom of the screen. And across the middle, catch made by Hay, but he's gonna be a yard shy of the first down as Johnson prevented the first, it's fourth down. No hesitancy at all from Eli Drinkwitz. He's going for it. a and hasn't allowed a fourth down conversion all year. From their own 34 yard line in the first quarter. Are they simply trying to draw them off? They may have jumped themselves. Ball start, offense number 76. Five yard penalty, it remains fourth down. And you gotta think that was a dummy cadence, right? You get up there, you try to see if you can get them to jump, you run a shift. But there's no hesitancy when they send them in there. 
would have been especially aggressive, especially knowing that you just seeded a short field to A&M. Try to play field position here. Get your defense back out on the field. Make the Aggies drive. Grant McKinnis, transfer from Kentucky that was their kicker five years ago as a graduate. Now here at Mizzou, kicks it to Anaya Smith. And he should have caught that one. Mm -hmm. It gives Missouri some a field position win at least. It's a 61-yard punt after the nice bounce for the Tigers. Texas A&M strikes first in Como. Faro Field on a Saturday morning still. Just 11-21 local time. Aggies scoring first. There's a lot of SEC games going on right now. Auburn striking first in Fayetteville against the Hogs. Florida and LSU playing in Baton Rouge at 11 a.m.? I didn't know they were allowed to do that in Louisiana. Calzada dumps it off to Weidermeyer. This guy can run. It's a first down across the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at our keys to victory stench brought to you by Barbecue Guys. When you think about some of the best offensive players in this conference and in this contest, they're going to be lined up at tailback. Isaiah Spiller last week, 89 yards versus Alabama on his 21 touches. That includes receiving yards. And then Tyler Beatty, what he did versus North Texas, 206 rushing yards, and he has been a workhorse that they sought at running back. Just past the 20, Calzada wide throw to Spiller. That's the first incompletion for Calzada. He didn't have many misfires last week. Stench completed his first 10 passes against the Tide. Started out hot, and when we were talking with Jimbo Fisher, we were saying, what's the difference? What's changed in number 10? Because he's had time to settle in. He said, look, guys are playing better around him. I think that's part of it. The other piece of it is that offensive front seemingly has started to solidify with at least the players. Maybe not always the lineup because they continue to shuffle players around. Certainly had their best game last week. Spiller, look at this wide open space. Gets past the 40 yard line as a Caleb Evans finally makes the tackle, but another nice run for Spiller. The junior from Spring, Texas, that's 19 yards. Yeah, so you, you pull your backside guard and tackle. The defense leans that way naturally. You think that's the point of attack. Instead, they sneak Isaiah Spiller opposite the direction of those pullers for a big gainer. Spiller leads the backfield. Calzada tries to throw one in there. It looks like it's a catch made by Chase Lane. And it's another first down, this into Mizzou territory. Nice catch by the sophomore from Houston. Two options there. You see Anaya Smith underneath. He works to the outside in breaking route there on Chase Lane, a guy that Jimbo Fisher also mentioned starting to emerge. It's four receptions by four different receivers already in this game. How often do you see eye formation in this day and age? Look at it work too. Spillers free. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Touchdown, Aggies. 48 more for Isaiah Spiller, one of the best backs in the Southeastern Conference. Well, we just talked about it. The role that the running back position plays for both these offense. Look at the blocking up front. That's not a hole. It's only a hole if you can see defenders defining the edges of the hole. That was like a vacuum, just nowhere. Small makes it 14-0. Yeah, that was a nice piece of land, wasn't it? My, that's right. I mean, you walk off the hectares on that one. There was a lot of room for Spiller to run. That's two really nice runs that we've seen AM rip off right at the heart of this Missouri defense. And we talked about it. That is their biggest area of challenge has been the run defense. Tried a three down front. That did not work well versus Tennessee. They've gone back down to four defensive linemen along the line of scrimmage. But still, their gap integrity, defenders that are plugging the holes in that offensive front still struggling to maintain their assignments. And AM able to capitalize on it. AM has not run the football great this season. Just a one minute, 33 second drive against this Mizzou defense. 
that is that has struggled mightily this season. Stinch mentioned uh, coach coaching change, dismissing defensive line coach Jethro Franklin. Al Davis promoted now as the defensive line coach. The Mizzou offense hasn't been a problem so far this season. It needs to get going today. Here's what Mizzou has allowed so far this season. Worst in college football. Uh, and you see it, they're allowing yardage before contact. That means you've got ball carriers that are amassing over 1,000 yards. And you see it's just an exchange, like a little pin and pull. So the left guard blocks down, the center pulls around, and it's a natural crease that's created. If you can't fight across the face of those blockers and beat them across their face to the gap that they're trying to create, you're going to end up with a big hole like that one. Basilak surveys the field and finds a receiver that's Parker underneath for just a few. It's second down. So Mizzou will go quickly here. So Mizzou very intent, getting that ball out quickly. AM did a great job last week of creating pressure. Not much doing there. As Beatty just gets a yard, it's, it's third and four. So Dove gets the five yard completion. Beatty just for one. This offense better stay on the field here on the third and five. Sideline pass, and that's picked off. There is a flag down. Leon O'Neill able to make that catch for the interception, but let's check the flag. came from a spot where you would expect defensive pass interference. So. Leon O'Neill leads the nation. He passes to finish. You see Edrick Cooper in coverage, didn't get his head around, and also had that left arm kind of hand fighting all the way down the boundary. He had a matchup that you like. Bazelak went to the right spot with that football and drew the pass interference. Beatty bounces around and doesn't get much, maybe a yard for Tyler. Aaron Hansford comes up to make the tackle for Texas A&M. Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator for the Aggies, still searching for who his communicator is with his linebackers. Hansford and Andre White have gotten a lot of playing time this year. Well, when the Aggies have given up big plays and yardage in games, it's largely been because of the lack of communication on that side of the ball. Beatty tries the left side and moves it out to the 45. So pick up a five. So another third down coming up for Mizzou. Edrin Cooper's another one of those linebackers that Coach Elko likes. He's the freshman from Covington, Louisiana, made the tackle there. Third down, and it's dropped just too high for the intended receiver, Dominic Lovett. Fourth down. And that's been the MO for Missouri in this game. They're a tempo offense, no doubt. But after their second down snaps, they are quick over the ball on those third downs. That time, they didn't freeze the cadence, didn't look over to the sideline. Bazelak snaps the ball quickly and had an opportunity to get it to Love it. That ball just too high and hot. Love it could have come down with it, but not great ball placement for the third down conversion. Down 14 nothing and punting it away. Not even nine minutes in. McKenna 61 yards his first time. Anaya Smith makes the fair catch at the 16 yard line. All Aggies so far on the road in Missouri. Keep us posted, PB, on all those games. I love it when all 14 teams are playing each other. Devon A-Chain keeps the gashing of that Missouri defense going as he carries it out near the 30-yard line. 
Already 14-0 Aggies. Let's go down to the field and Alyssa. Guys, every time you talk to these Aggie players, they emphasize Jimbo Fisher emphasizing the little things. After that last offensive drive resulting in a touchdown, he went around to every position group as they were celebrating and said, hey, next play, that's what's most important. You got to keep it locked in, emphasizing the little things. He's done a great job of that so far, but A-Chain drops this one out of the backfield. That's the only... That's the only really the play that has bothered Calzada, just trying to dump it off to his tailbacks out of the backfield. He's the only other incompletion before that one was trying to hit Isaiah Spiller last time. It was too far out in front. That time it was behind A Chain as he left the backfield. His towards is off on these swing patterns. A Chain kick return last week as he takes it past the 30. I know there's a bunch of plays you could pick last week. But Alabama blocks the punt, gets the touchdown. You think, okay, here comes the tide with right. all their momentum. A-chain, house call on the kick return, and Kyle Field was rocking. If you could ever boil down a game to one play, I think that was it. You needed an answer offensively. Offense didn't even have to take the field. Now the first time the Aggies have really been challenged here on third down. Weidermeyer's in the slot at the bottom of the formation. Zada still got time, just under five on the play clock. Pocket collapses, and he throws the ball to Weidermeyer, and a flag does come in. Weidermeyer was double covered, but Sean Robinson didn't make a play on the ball. It's so hard on these DBs on this one. This ball's underthrown. There's pressure, Jameer Johnson allowing it off the edge. Pass interference, defense number 12. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. And automatic first down. You gotta call it, right? Yeah, you have to. And, and you know, look, get your head around all those things. That ball's so underthrown. And Robinson's, Robinson's trying to run with this big body down the sideline. It wasn't a clean route off the line of scrimmage. Tripped over his own receiver to Jalen Weidermeyer, but Bailed out by the call. He's done a good job, Robinson has, transitioning yeah. from being the Mizzou starting quarterback to a defensive back with a lot of injuries in the secondary for Mizzou. A-chain makes a man miss, gets into Mizzou territory, and he's inside the 35-yard line. Darius Robinson had a chance at him in the backfield, couldn't make the tackle, and A-chain gets 20. You got to make that play, right? You're sitting there going, look, we've got a free hitter in the backfield. The ball carrier is spilled to the unblocked defender at or behind the line of scrimmage. Can't miss that tackle. As easy as it is to say versus a burner like Devon Aching. And boy, is he that. He's one of the best track runners in America. Look at this speed. Inside the 20, down near the 15-yard line, Mizzou has no answer for AM's ground game. Look at the wall that's set up by the left side. And it's a clean cutback for H.A. And a guy that we talked about those yards before contact, nearly 1,100 yards coming into this game. Now they're piling on. That was another 17 yards just on that carry before contact. All-American track runner, but has no chance here as he's gobbled up by Trajan Jeffcoat, the junior from the other Columbia, Columbia, South Carolina. It's a tackle for loss. That's right on time for the Missouri defense. You're getting gashed. And he just, that's called, you just charge the mesh. So he's going to charge upfield. He's not worried about the quarterback pulling it right there. That's the third tackle for loss for the Missouri defense. And that one was timely. It's a loss of five. Calzada. Sets up the screen, and it's a hit over the head of A-Chain. Calzada's been good trying to go to his receivers and his tight ends down the field, not so much to the backs out of the backfield. Now the touch passes, ultimately, right? Because you're not looking to burn this ball in there. That time you're just lobbing it over the heads of the defensive front. I'm not sure it had a lot of chance. You'd have to break a tackle. It looked like there were two defenders unblocked. Now third and 10 plus. They were able to convert last time on a pass interference.
to Jalen Weidermeyer, who's attached at the end of the line of scrimmage to the left side of the formation. He is their favorite target on third down. On the ground, A-chain. They haven't stopped the running game, so go that way, and it's another touchdown. He's untouched into the end zone for 20 yards. Coming into this game, we thought maybe this is your chance to get your running game going, and they have. You end up folding a lead blocker inside, lined up at tight end, ends up being a lead blocker up into the inside, and it's the interior portion of that offensive front. Get Kenyon Green in there at left guard with great push. Well, the Aggies needed 15 yards on third down. You usually wouldn't run the ball in that situation, but they're averaging 15 yards per run. SEC Network Football presented by SEC Allstate. SEC Network Save Football money is like a presented champion by Allstate. Allstate. With Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang, I'm Taylor Zarzer here at Faro Field. It's a beautiful day, but the home team doesn't have much to smile about so far. Texas A&M gashing that Missouri defense. And the offense hasn't been able to stay on the field on third down. Now nah, you see, think about the conversion earlier off a of, off of pass interference for the Missouri offense. Couldn't maintain that possession. So you think about it, you know, right now you start the game off, interception, and that's on the heels of a procedure penalty. There would have been a first down in plus territory for the Missouri offense. Instead, it results in a touchdown going the other way. And then a pass interference call on the underthrown ball on third down, the real, the first real third and long scenario. AM gets out of it with that pass interference, and then the explosive run game is just hammering the Tiger defense. Here comes Abrams' drain from the three. Wrong call. Only gets out to the 12. Coming up next, South Carolina hosts Vandy with both teams looking for their first conference W. And at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, Matt Corral leads number 13 Ole Miss against 4-2 Tennessee in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Lane Kiffin back in Knoxville. Now he, he's been back to Knoxville, Stinch, yeah. as an offensive coordinator for Alabama, but he's the head coach of another team now. His first trip back to Tennessee, where he used to be the coach for one year. What if we go check out that rock they got over there? They always spray paint. See what kind of messages they got <laughs> for their former coach. I don't know if um, our camera crew tonight will be able to show those messages. <laughs> Basilak doesn't have anything going, and he's going to get the sack. Just held on to the ball too long. DeMarvin Leal. Boy, has the Aggie defensive line been terrific these last few weeks. He had two sacks against State two weeks ago. You know, the protection's not bad here. Look at this pocket. Just nowhere to go with the football. Ultimately collapses inside out. And that happens so much. Yeah, you can't put that really on Javon Foster right there. Your quarterback's flushing right into the rush. Good job inside out by the Aggie front, but too long with the football. Loss of nine, Michael Cox. Gets a lot of it back, actually all of it back, and then some. Nice cutback. Loss contained on the edge did Jalen Jones. Coming up there and run support. Has to keep that runner on his inside shoulder instead. Great job of getting outside. And to get this Missouri offense kind of jump started on this possession. 22 yard gain for the guy from Stinchcomb country. Holy Innocence High School in Atlanta, GA. It's an unofficial municipality. <laughs> Cox again, gets a couple. He's one of five tailbacks that Eli Drinkwitz has used so far this season. Seen a lot of Tyler Beatty, true freshman B.J. Harris, Dawson Downing at the 60-yard touchdown last week against North, North Texas. Eli Young has run it a bunch. They call on Cox to get them a little bit of breathing room out near the 30-yard line. Beatty back in on a second and eight. Basilak, that's picked off. Telegraph two, as it's Antonio Johnson with his first career interception. There is a flag down. They 
Now bringing a safety on the blitz. Now, hands and face, offense number 55. Penalty will be declined. He goes to the play, it's an interception, first down. A&M, they showed a two deep safety look, two safeties out, but what Mike Elko does such a good job of is adding defenders to the box, they bring a safety blitz. You see Michael Maetti's trying to respond to the blitz by Edger and Cooper, got his hands up in the face, and then of course, Antonio Johnson, who's from right here in Missouri, St. Louis, probably the best defender on this Aggie defensive unit, and another turnover generated. Known for his tackling, not necessarily his ball hawking, but he gets it there. Now back to Spiller after A-Chain's drive led to a touchdown. Spiller gets a few down to Alyssa. Guys, one of the things that we talked with Jimbo Fisher about this week that I thought was interesting was he was talking about Zach Calzada and why last week was so much better. He said, well, he finally wasn't under duress all the time. He had a cleaner pocket. Communication was better. So on that last Aggie offensive drive, he took that big sack. Jimbo Fisher immediately over to the O-line on the sidelines, coaching them up, making sure they keep that pocket clean. There was a couple other times, too, Alyssa, where it was collapsing as he got rid of it. They're doing a good job run blocking. Boy, are they. The flag does come in as Spiller gets down to the 15. We might get Jalen Weidermeyer, who great receiving tight end, still working on his blocking, if in fact it's on him. Going right at his feet. Holding offense number 55. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat second down. Instead, they call it on the Aggies' best offensive lineman, definitely the most versatile. Started the season at right tackle. He's played every position but center this year, and he did some of that last year. Look at what guards. Mizzou defense has given up this year, Stench, especially on the ground, the worst in the country. 458 yards rushing for Tennessee here in Como a couple of weeks ago. Every single week. They just have not been able to get off the field, and Texas A&M already has 151 rushing yards here in the first quarter as it comes to an end. You think back to that last third down, you think an obvious passing down, red zone. No, you hand the football off, and you end up in the end zone. It just proves that the Aggie offense can get going on the ground. Jimbo Fisher 21-0 at leading after the first quarter. All Aggies in the first quarter as they over had over 150 rushing yards in that first quarter. Calzada threw a touchdown pass to Anaya Smith. And De Devon A-Chain and Isaiah Spiller both with rushing touchdowns on the ground. They start the second quarter with a second and six at the Mizzou 36. Spiller, nowhere to go this time, is bottled up. Tonight, SEC football final is back, hosted by Dari Noko with Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and Benjamin Watson. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break all the games down. 10.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. There's a man down on the field for Mizzou. Georgia, number one in the country, hosting undefeated Kentucky in Athens coming up in a few hours. Isn't it amazing? The first time in East Division history that you've got two 6-0 and o teams facing off. And, you know, it's part of that's a function of Florida and Tennessee, Georgia, all kind of playing each other earlier in the season, so one of them ends up with a loss somewhere. They tend to a injured Tiger on the field. You think about what Mark Stoops has done there at Kentucky and the changes he's made and how they've evolved offensively and can they find a way to puncture what has otherwise been an impenetrable defense all season long for Georgia? A dominant front seven should be an amazing atmosphere. That's Chris Turner you were talking about that's down stench, still on the field. Graduate from Hammond, Louisiana. Let's see if we can take a look at what happened on this last play. You see him, he's got, he's got great leverage right there, but he ends up getting rolled up from the inside out. Layden Robinson, it looked like, at right guard. 
Ends up rolling up the back of his leg. Happens a lot. But Tom Turner just setting the edge versus true freshman Ruben Fathery. Well, last time we saw this, a third and 10 plus, the Aggies ran the ball. That produced a touchdown from Devon A-Chain. It's Spiller in the backfield next to Calzada on this third and 16. Throws this time, and it's a sideline throw at the feet of his intended receiver. He was looking for Jalen Preston, but nice coverage there by the Tigers. Fourth down. That time that ball a little bit low. And as you mentioned, would have been short of the line to gain anyway. Would not have converted on that one. A route clearly to make it a more makeable field goal. Seth Small, he scared Aggie fans for a second there, didn't he, before that <laughs> he ball did. sort of shifted back to the right with the 28-yarder last week. This is a 53-yard attempt. And it is right down the heart, but short. Well, Small has that kind of leg. He's attempted kicks from 50 plus yards before, but this one, not enough oomph. And there's not much wind to speak of either. I think he might have caught this one a little bit fat. Got underneath it, but he was short at least 10 yards, maybe 15. You know what we call that in golf? You hit the big ball, the earth, before the little ball. <laughs> yeah, that big ball does get in, does get in the way from time, for me almost all the time. <laughs> so small, I think he's earned more than a little bit of goodwill. Certainly would want that one back. Bazelak needs to get going, runs out of the pocket, and it's a catch made by Dominic Lovett, freshman from East St. Louis, and he picks up nine yards, second and one. So there's a way to do it. Right, start getting Connor Bazelak on the move. Move the pocket a little bit, neutralize some of the push the Aggies can get. And to the ground, Beatty moves the chains up to the 47 yard line. Going back to love it, Stinch, I think a lot of Mizzou fans are wondering where is our top shelf all SEC type receiver? Love it could be that guy. You talk to the coaching staff and they'll tell you he has the most potential to be the game breaker. Definitely gets to the attention of opposing team's defenses for sure with his speed. Beatty again. He's up to the 50 with a flag coming in. Likely gonna get a call. Holding the offense number 59. 10 yard penalty, previous spot. Repeat first down. Just got great penetration right away. And you know, when you're running these gap schemes or these zone schemes, rather, you know, the one way that you can get them off schedule as an offense is you create penetration. You make the back change his track towards the line of scrimmage and bubble that run, meaning he's got to change his angle instead of trying to attack the line of scrimmage, head towards the sideline. Case Cook trying to rally late, ended up with a holding call. All the way back to the 37-yard line. Basilek dumps it off for Beatty. But Beatty had no chance as Michael Clemens was about as close to the football as yeah. he was. It's a loss of seven. Michael Clemens is a giant. He's 6'5". He gets upfield nearly. If he is jetting upfield as well, he saw Beatty trying to leak for the screen. He didn't rush upfield initially, so he sniffed that out. But you're right, Taylor. He could have made that reception. Marvin Leal applying the pressure on the play. Now second and 27 to the sideline. And it's Chance Looper for seven, but it'll be third and 20 for Mizzou. So, you know, dial up your third and 20 call, right? And you're the play caller and head coach, and Eliah Drinkwitz, he's got to be looking at that call sheet going, that isn't on the page, guys. And we're not in four down territory at all. You're in minus territory here. What can you try to do? And the way A&M has done such a good job, as you see now congested in the middle and showing pressure. 
just will try to get a receiver to create. Looper, flag comes in as he gets up past the 45 yard line. Mizzou without a couple of receivers today, Mookie Cooper and Barrett Bannister. Holding, offense, number 14, Tony is declined, fourth down. It's the fifth time a penalty was called on Mizzou. This one declined. It's another punt for the Tigers. And after what looked to be a promising start to this series, these guys, and ultimately we've seen this already early on in the game, where you've got penalties derailing any momentum and then negative yardage plays just pushing them behind the sticks. McKinnis is third punt. Smith catches it out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Texas A&M finding their groove in October. The best part about Velveeta it brings a lot of plays together, a lot of ingredients, why not this? Let's pick a bunch of them. We can't pick just one. You end up in the end zone all the time. Isaiah Spiller ripping off a big run. Ending up in the end zone. And of course, how about Devon A-Chain on a third down? You're thinking pass, you get a handoff, and you end up with a touchdown. A-Chain gets a couple more out to the 20 yard line. You were talking in the open about A&M trying to find its identity. They had some adversity on their offensive line, losing Luke Matthews, their center for the season. Bryce Foster, their true freshman, is out there playing at center. Kenyon Green has played a bunch of different positions on that line, right tackle, left guard, left tackle. And Layden Foster, Layden Robinson, rather, has been banged up too. And that's the calling card for Jimbo Fisher, is offensive line play is across the middle. This is incomplete to Weidemeyer. It's third down. Let's go back to the studio and Peter Burns for an update. Thank you, Taylor, from one set of Tigers to another. How about this? Just like we all planned it, right? Ty Davis Price, LSU's rushing attack, answering the bell. Seven to six, 11 minutes left in the second quarter. Back to you, Lewis. Thanks, PB. So LSU with the early lead there on the Gators. Those are two teams that don't like each other. Third and 10, can the Mizzou defense Get off the field. Calzada to the sideline. It was juggled a bit by Lane, but they give him the catch for 11. And Mizzou said, look, we're going to bring pressure. We'll see if we can hold up in coverage, and they don't. Trying to get the ball out there and do to chase Lane. I don't know about that one, Stitch. They're quick over the ball. And yeah, they're going to take a look at it. AM knew it, too. Ruling on the field was a catch at the sideline. The previous play is under review. Yeah, they got over the ball quickly. They wanted to rip off that play before they took a second look at that. But you could see it covers zero, no safeties. Yeah, he does, he does not have possession of the ball as he's. Of course, yeah, there's the snap as they tried to get it off before they whistled it. Ken Switzer, today's replay official up here. Jamie Williams, communicator, will take a look at it with the referee, Ken Williamson. Looked like Lane was about to make the catch, but then Pierce loses possession of it as he goes out of bounds. Look at it here, and does he have firm control in the field of play? It didn't look like he did. He had his hands on it, sure. But that ball is dancing all over the place, it looks like. It does not look to be firm control. Yeah, control being the appropriate word, and this would Look, I realize it's 21-0, but Mizzou's looking for any, sure. anything yeah. right to happen right now. And this, you would think, would give them the football back. 
You know, and part of this too is, is the run defense, and why would you throw it if you can run it? And certainly the Aggies have. They've done a pretty good job in pass defense. It's been accommodated by some errant throws from Calzada, and it looks like this one's going to end up an incomplete pass. After further review, the pass has been ruled incomplete. Therefore, the fourth down and 10 yards to go at the 20 yard line. The ball be placed in the left middle position. Under the circumstances, Taylor, big stop. It's a big stop. You know, otherwise, you're saying, look, all this team has done is take shots at our end zone or our goal posts. This time, we're going to make you punt it away to us. The first stop, really, by the Missouri defense. You got a missed field goal to your credit as well. Nick Constantino makes his first appearance. Standing at his own five yard line and Boo Smith is out near midfield waiting. Ten fifty two left in the second quarter with Mizzou up 21 nothing and Constantino the Australian with a dandy inside the 30 and Boo couldn't get firm grasp of it, had to dive on it. Mizzou will get it at the 34 yard line looking for their first points. spice latte kind of guy. So things you never thought you'd know about your Missouri head coach. By the way, I've been standing down here on the Missouri sidelines. That last defensive drive was huge for them. The sidelines had been lacking a little bit of energy. You see a couple of key guys going around trying to give them that edge that Coach Drink has been trying to preach in practice all week long, guys. What do you put in your coffee? You a big pumpkin spice latte guy? I put nothing in my, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> don't even refuse to drink it. Get up to the 35-yard line. This is the time of year for pumpkin spice latte for sure. they got to find a way. Missouri's got to find a way to spice up their first downs. Ooh, well done. Like that? Yeah. 1.8 yards averaging on first down, now zero yards on that carry. they got to find a way to set their offense up better and be more proficient on first downs. That's what's been working for the Aggie offense. They've been averaging 11 yards on their first down tries. Basilak keeps it himself this time, and he gets up to the 39-yard line. It's another third down for Mizzou. They're just one of four today. They've been great. Number one in the SEC coming into this game, but so far not so good. And I know you want to protect your quarterback, but Basilak's a good athlete, a guy that can scramble. He's only had 15 rush attempts coming into this game. Make it 16 now. A guy that can make some plays. Dawson downing in the backfield with Looper going in motion. Basilak, good ball, first down, past midfield as J.J. Hester makes the grab. That time, Mike Elko dials up a little bit of pressure. Doesn't get home, and on the slant, that ball's behind him. Great job. Coming up with that catch, a spinning catch. 41-yard touchdown catch for Hester last week. This is the first play in Aggie territory for Mizzou, but hold on a second, there's a flag on the field. There's no foul on the play. Players were getting set for the snap. First down. So we will see a snap in Aggie territory. The penalties plaguing the Missouri offense throughout this first half. Beautiful day in the Show Me State, as you can see. It's Beatty's trying to find some place to go, and that's that's been a big problem so far. It's just just no running room. Beatty's hitting the hole hard, but there are Aggies everywhere. Yeah, and, and the hole is evaporating by the time he gets to the line of scrimmage. That time, Tyree Johnson, the first Aggie to arrive among many others. Right now, maintain your blocks up front to give your backs opportunities. Nobody back there with Basilak on second and nine. Just over the hand, but here come a flag. Kiki Chisholm, the intended target. See if they get Jalen Jones here. 
We've seen a couple of PIs in this game. I think they were pretty evident. That Pass one. interference, defense number 17. Pennedale will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. What do you think, Stinch? Yeah, at, at first look, it didn't look like there was much there. I guess you're getting him for his left hand right there. Otherwise, that looked like that was a well-played ball in the air. The others we've seen pretty physical, and the flags came out that time. Didn't seem near as much contact, really. Beatty cuts. It works. Touchdown, Mizzou. Thirty-two yards for one of the best backs in the SEC. And those tailbacks going now. Jalen Jones, who was just called for pass interference, is being too physical in the passing game. Wasn't physical enough. And how about Beatty dragging defenders into the end zone? That kid runs bigger than he is. We were looking at him on the field. He's not a big back, but he does run with power. Harrison Mevis hasn't missed anything this year. Tyler Beatty was a three-year backup to Larry Roundtree. Now, he's the man. 32 yards for the senior from New Orleans, Louisiana. Missouri on the board against the Aggies. 21-7 Aggies, it is time to eat like a champion. This week, it's Hosses Market, locally owned here in Columbia since 2002, owned and operated by the Ketting family who is watching intently on this very play because that man that's about to put his right foot into the football is Sean Ketting, and he's the best in the country at cooking touchbacks, and my goodness, here's another great one. He's been sensational all year. Now, let's see. We, I've got the Cuban this week, smoked pork loin, chipotle jack cheese, which you can really taste, pickle and country mustard. mustard. What do you have? A mouthful. <laughs> the big hoss, right? I got the big hoss, which has got every form of meat you could have on brisket, turkey, ham, cheddar. Melissa, you have the Shawner Deluxe. As well as a mouthful. It's very good. He you know what I also it. have is gumbo. Yeah. Did y'all get gumbo? We did get gumbo. There is Spiller. And it's a first down. Out past the 35-yard line. Here's Cutting, whose family owns Hosses Market. That's a big kicker, man. No, he is terrific, too. He has 39 touchbacks on the season. And he's got his own sandwich that Alyssa's eating right now. <laughs> what a gift. Touchbacks. They do such a great job. They, this gumbo is terrific as well. And they provide all the food for all the police officers and the security detail here at the stadium. Spiller comes up to the 45. So we were looking for a place to go this week. And I said, why not ask the legendary voice of the Mizzou Tigers, Mike Kelly, who is there in the booth right there. And Mike is next to Howard Richards. They're both big fans. Oh, there they go. See, they got their own sandwiches. Oh, all right, yeah. Mike. Mike's got the big hoss. <laughs> Mike's a big dude. He could crush that big hoss during a commercial break, I'm sure. Those guys are terrific. And two of the best in the country at calling games. And Spiller goes the wrong way and runs into a defender there. Caleb Evans came up. And to me, Spiller missed his cut. He got greedy. He tried to bounce that run one too many times. Stick your outside foot and get upfield right there. Try to pick up what you have. And instead, nice tackle in space by Evans to force this third down right at midfield. The Missouri defense, can they get back-to-back -back stops on the Aggie offense? Calzada steps up, incomplete. The flag does come in. He was looking for Anaya Smith. 
was going to be a tight window. There was nowhere to put that ball in. Pass interference, defense number 26. Kennedy will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. Caleb Evans, the same guy that made the tackle on the previous play. Yeah, what's going on? I mean, these, we've got back-to-back -back DBs. Last time it was Jalen Jones with a PI and then a missed tackle. Now Caleb Evans, who had a great tackle. Oh, man. I don't – I'm not seeing it. You know, the, we've, had, we've seen four defensive pass interference calls in this game. The last two, there hadn't been a ton of contact. Nia Smith running all over the place in the backfield. Calzada wide open, A-chain out of the backfield, and the turf monster tripped him up. Otherwise, it would have been a touchdown. Yeah, he got tackled by the throw. Because <laughs> if that ball's in front of him, he ends up running through the back of this new end zone facility. Instead, it turns him around. Great job of making the catch. The ball placement ends up tackling A-chain right there, but wide open. And once again, we see these penalties opening up the gate for the respective offenses. 27 yards from A-chain. Calzada finds Spiller, already over 100 yards rushing, and now gets a few receiving. It's nine more. Back to the studio and Peter Burns. Thank you, Taylor. Death, taxes, and LSU Florida getting wonky. How about Emory Jones picked off? Cordell Flock, good play. Micah Baskerville takes it out, and then a couple plays later, Jare Jenkins with a perfect dime for Max Johnson. 14 to 6, LSU driving once again. So LSU turning things around. Meanwhile, here for Missouri, arguably their best defender so far this season, Chris H. Drain as the entire Mizzou defense around him right now as he's on the field. Well, you talk to this coaching staff and they rave. Call him KAD, another one of these selfless guys, makes the switch over to defense. They've asked him to play a lot of football for him. He's been key to their secondary. It's Saturday, it's time to represent your school. Show us how big you're going today. Submit your best fan video this weekend to hashtag show your Saturday and you might just get your 15 seconds of fan fame. Eli Drinkwitz and Mizzou needs to get off the field against this Aggie offense that has found its groove the last couple of weeks. Right. Isaiah Spiller already over 100 yards rushing, 14th time in his career. He's done it. We're only in the first half and just caught a 10-yard completion to put the Aggies down at the Mizzou 12-yard line. We mentioned it earlier, though, red zone has been problematic. They've ripped off a couple of big plays that got them in there. When they get in the red zone, they tend to stagnate offensively. Spiller didn't have any place to go and just goes ahead for a yard. Makai Wingo, we were talking about Mike Kelly and Howard Richards. Richards has been raving about Wingo all season. He's the kind of player you can build a defense around. Yeah, had a big play last week. Big man touchdown, a pick six going the other direction versus North Texas. A guy who's he's pretty twitchy, comes out of his stance quickly, comes through his hips with a lot of power. That time they did a good job playing down the line on Spiller trying to get outside. Second and nine. Calzada against his body. To the end zone, too easy, Anaya Smith. Smith with two touchdown catches last week, two more today. He's got three options on the play. And Smith worked in and then back out. Rolled to his left. That's a well-placed ball by Calzada, who does a good job throwing against his throwing arm. You have to rewind to the third down in the pass interference that gave the Aggies the, a fresh set of downs. The Aggies get the momentum back as they have a three touchdown lead. SEC Network Football, presented by Allstate, is brought to you by new Coca Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today.
half. Uh, back to Como. Enjoy. <laughs> You've got opposite sides of the aisle there between Peter and Chris. Now let's check out the celebration moment brought to you by Allstate. Johnny Manziel filming the finish last week. Seth Small to attempt the 28-yarder. Manziel is not going to be one of our camera operators. But you got to love this celebration. And thanks to Johnny Foots, he gave us permission to use it. Guys, I talked to Leon O'Neill this week. He said in his four years at A&M, he's never seen Jimbo dance. And that was the best moment of his Aggie career. <laughs> I'd never seen him dance either. Uh, I think everybody was pumped for Jimbo, except for Alabama fans, of course. Yeah. Doesn't look like he does a ton of dancing. He wasn't real impressed with his own. He's like, well, yeah, I danced a little bit. I don't know if we'll see a ton of it after that either. It's not because of a lack of success. That's a special moment. That's an old school ball coach over there on the sideline. Manziel was playing quarterback the last time a and had a win like that over number one Alabama. Shovel pass into heavy traffic. Only a few for Nico Hay. Yeah, to your point, it's not bad. I mean, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Look at that. Look at the focus. You can tell he's having a big time. How could you not? But I, I will say, you know, what was a first order of business for him after that game and at his press conference early part of this week? We got to turn the page, we got to move on. And he knows that they've got the balance of their schedule, half a year yet to play. Third and eight for Mizzou, down three touchdowns. Facing pressure, Basilak gets away, incomplete. He's looking for J.J. Hester, but it's fourth down. Well, it seemed like you see Basilak a little gimpy after that play. The Missouri on early downs would work in some more boots. The problem is, of course, they had not got that ground game going that well. And he moves well, runs well. When you think about the completion to Dominic Lovett. A couple of series ago where you move the pocket because you want to and by design, A&M heating up the Missouri offense on these third downs. Grant McKinnis again, this is fourth punt. It's a good one, and Smith with a fair catch at his own 43-yard line. Coming up next, South Carolina hosts Vandy with both teams looking for their first conference W, and it's 7.30 Eastern. Matt Corral leads number 13 Ole Miss against 4-2 Tennessee in our SEC Saturday night matchup. How about Tennessee and Josh Heupel, the old OC at Mizzou? They put a clinic on the Tigers here in Como two weeks ago. That volunteer offense is unlike anything we've seen in many years. And what about how quickly he's turned it around? You think about a defensively led team, I guess, a defensive minded team, but offensively inept for them to be putting up the points that they are back to back weeks. Back to the ground, A chain who's been brilliant so far inside the 40 before Tigers collide on him. 18 more for A-Chain in this Aggie rushing attack that's approaching 200 yards rushing in the first half. A-Chain, you know, he's just looking around like, is anybody, is anybody gonna come over here and get me? He's, he's 15 yards downfield and no one was close to touching him. The yards before contact at the end of this game are going to be immense. A-Chain again. Ahead to the 34. And we were saying this earlier, since he's known as a world-class sprinter. He's an all-American track runner in 100 meter, 200 meters, and the four by 100 relay. Guy runs a 20.31 200 meter dash. That's got to be good. I don't know. I've never run 200 meters in my life, but you take, it seems like that's incredibly. You fast. take a Vespa to go 20 <laughs> meters. Calzada. Slams it into Weidermeyer, who gets past the 30-yard line, down to the 28, D.J. Jackson on the tackle. You know, we were talking about this, though, and, and you see these track guys 
it doesn't always translate to the football field. You don't always see them. They're not game fast. How fast are you with the ball in your hands? How fast are you with a helmet on your head? How fast are you in traffic? Because there are no lanes out there. And what A-Chain has is vision as well. And he finishes his runs physically. All day long for Calzada, and he's picked off. Jalen Carlisle stepped in front of it and gets the Tigers the ball back. A flag comes in at the end of the play. Calzada had other options. He wanted A-Chain all the way and stared him down. Begged Carlisle to come make this play. And Carlisle took him up on it. After the interception during the return, block in the back, intercepting team, number 18. 10 yard penalty for spot of the foul. First down. Calzada has done this in every start, throwing an interception stench. Yeah, no, he, he not only was he on A-chain, see him, he won six all the way. And he's late. And because of that, you get a pick going the other way. Trying to get the ball to A-chain in the passing game. The running game has paced this offense largely. And Calzada hasn't been able to escape a game where he's throwing a pass without throwing a pick. You see the frustration there on the sidelines. I'm sure he's already been coached up on the way to the bench over there. I can confirm that. I witnessed it just a second ago. Jimbo gave him an earful. Just 128 to go in the half, and Missouri does have all three of its timeouts as Beatty gets up to the 24. A&M does get the ball first to start the second half, so you would think Coach Drinkwitz would like to get some points in the next 70 seconds. Not a ton of urgency, though, right now to Missouri. Back-to-back -back running plays. And third down. Dre White at, right at the line of scrimmage, and now a timeout will be used. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of Marching Mizzou. It's on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. They're here today on a cool, crisp October morning slash afternoon. Meanwhile, for Missouri, as you see, Calzada, after the interception, he says, I'm good. Mizzou has a third and four with 101 to go until halftime. And I get you don't want to give the ball back, right? You don't go out there, you throw three quick passes and punt it away to a dangerous return team. At the same time, they could, took possession with that. There was a minute 28. They put some time back on the clock now. So that timeout was called before it got under a minute. Got a third down right here. You don't convert, you're gonna kick it back to AM regardless. It's Parker moving from one side of the line to the other and Dove in motion. Basilak dumps it off to Beatty and he gets past the marker. He does lose the ball out of bounds as Andre White and Aaron Hansford ran over there with him. First down, Tigers. He did lose that ball right at the boundary. You gotta reset the chains. Missouri's already over the ball and ready to snap. Basilak under pressure gets it to Beatty again. And he's out of bounds at the 39 yard line. I think it's quite clear, Stench, that Coach Drinkwitz does not have much confidence in throwing the football down the field today. Just dumping it off, using Beatty, using underneath receivers coming out of the slot. Yeah, the ball's coming out quickly for sure. You can see why even on that last throw, Bazelak with defenders draped all over him as he delivers the football. It's it away quickly here, but over the head of Looper, third and two. Now part of the concern is you're sitting there going, so yet another third down here after a couple throws. Is that as you mentioned, Taylor, 
couple of bad looking interceptions in the first half. So not only you want to play the clock, but you also want to make sure that you don't put the ball in jeopardy right before halftime. You don't want it to go the other direction in the passing game. At the same time, try to take advantage of this possession knowing that your opponent gets the ball first in the second half. Beatty, I don't think he got there. Marked a yard shy. Michael Clemens and Damani Richardson on the tackle. And the Tigers might just let the clock run out. Home crowd did not like what they saw in the first half. Just 144 yards of total offense. AM with 193 yards rushing. Missouri turned it over two times. And trails by three touchdowns at the break. Texas AM will get it first in the second half. Lots of momentum for the Aggies after the win against number one Alabama last week. Looking very strong in the first half in Columbia, Missouri this week. We thought they would emphasize that run game. There's an opportunity to get it going. They certainly did here in the first half. And here's Alyssa with Coach Fisher. Coach, pretty good game from Zach till that last pick. What'd you say to him? It, lay it out there. He's got him. He just under, he was trying to be too precise with it. Just got to lay it in the corner and go get it. And we got, we, we, we up three and then we get a holding call then we get something else then we had i love the answer up drive but we left a lot of points out there we got to clean some things up how would you evaluate your performance defensively i think we're doing a really good job we gave up the one drive got a couple penalties on the interference we got to get that down but we're playing the run really well thanks coach thank you so good start for coach fisher ranked 21st in the country a lot of other games going on let's send you back to the studio with peter burns hurry 28 to 7. come on up here to the press box where we're watching the game today with the College Football Hall of Famer Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Taylor Zarzer. Alyssa Lang is down on that field and down on that field stench we have seen the Texas A&M Aggies offense come to life in October. Yeah the running game pacing the offense throughout the first half taking advantage of turnovers and poorly timed penalties. Never a good time to have a penalty but we've seen some things really affect the outcome of the first half but Isaiah Spiller a guy coming into this game where we said he is one of the best offensive playmakers in this conference. It's proven to be the case here today. We thought Tyler Beatty on the other side, he did it as well, but it's been largely the Aggies running backs. Devon A-Chain getting in on the action as well, an explosive runner, a guy that's not scared to go between the tackles despite the fact that he's got remarkable speed. See the celebration with his offensive lineman. The offensive front got after it too in the first half. Ketting kicks it over A Chain's head. And Aggies will start at the 25. You were just talking about the success that those two running backs had. Here are their numbers 91 yards for A Chain and a touchdown in the first half, over 100 for the 14th time in Spiller's career. I mean, the averages just jump out at you, right? Because those are big numbers regardless. But to average 10 yards a carry, and when you look at the yards before contact for the AM offense, 113 yards before they make contact with the defender. That speaks well of this offensive front and the combination that the AM coaching staff has established. I imagine we'd see a lot more of those guys and maybe some other backs in the second half. Spiller does not get much. Allie Green on the tackle. Meanwhile, for the Missouri defense, just an inability to get off the field all season long, giving up 193 rushing yards in the first half. This defense statistically the worst in the conference, the worst in the country against the run at the midway mark of the season. Calzada second and nine. and. He overthrows Spiller again. It's the third time today he's misfired on that play, and Spiller had no one in front of him. 
You said it. It's right there. It's effectively a screen. You got those receivers on that side of formation running back towards the core, back towards where your tackles and the line of scrimmage is. It's picking off the would-be coverage from the interior portion of the defense. And Calzada has struggled. You mentioned it. They've missed Spiller twice and A-chain once on that exact play. Third and nine. Early at right tackle. Ruben Fathery. Third down. A freshman from Richmond, Texas. Moving too early. He stepped in and really Fathery has kind of helped unlock this new offensive arrangement along the line. Jameer Johnson, who was banged up a little bit. Last week was playing inside at guard. Now it's Kenyon Green. Now can the Aggies convert a third and long as they did in the first half and a big opportunity for this Missouri defense. Aggies have to get to the 35-yard line. They've tried this a couple times, and it's worked on third and long, and Spiller is right there as Chris Sheeran makes the tackle. I think he got it. I think he got the the line to gain there. He's right there at it. They've already got the yard marker. They haven't moved the chains. I don't know. I mean, he had to get to the 35, and he dove over the 35, but obviously depends on where exactly they're going to spot this. Coach Fisher's over there helping the officials, providing them some support. I'm sure being objective about it. No, oh, of course. He just wants to help them with the spot. Most coaches do. And it looks as if they're moving the chains. Once again, third and 10 plus. And A&M just says, you know what, we'll keep it on the ground. And you can't blame them. You know, we just showed the statistics coming out of half. You're averaging 10 yards a touch. Isaiah Spiller this time, before it was Devon A-chain in the high red zone, and you're able to get these conversions. Third and 10 plus, you gotta expect to get off the field. And even though they've moved the chains, they are taking a look at the spot. Great job of getting outside. Did he step out, Stench, at the 33, yeah. his right foot? And where's the ball when he did, right? Because he was kind of laying out. It looked as if he was leaning forward, but I don't think he was all the way to the 35 when his right foot. Watch his right foot. There. Now nah, he can't. Well, it's hard to tell from that angle. It definitely does not look as if it was possible. After further 35. review, the runner was ruled down with the ball at the 34-yard line. That'll make it fourth down and one. So a break for Missouri as Spiller ends up a yard shy and Jimbo says punt it away. Narrowly missed it. You just don't see that all the time, of course. And you know, the, what's the coaching point there as they come off the field? It's, you got to hit your wide open back out of the backfield for the third time. Three different opportunities for the Aggie offense and kind of stopped themselves on that series. Constantino comes on just for the second time today with Boo Smith standing near his 20 yard line. This is a cannon. Smith inside the 10. Flags everywhere as he gets up to 15 yard line. Constantino 56 yards in the air. Coming up next, South Carolina hosts Vandy with both teams looking for their first conference W. And at 7.30 Eastern, Matt Corral leads number 13 Ole Miss against 4-2 Tennessee in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Dave and Deuce. Spring return, block in the back. Seeing team number 35. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Dave and Deuce and Drea coming up in South Carolina with Vandy, and then as you see the block in the back here. Ole Miss in Tennessee tonight with Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, and Cole Kublik. Well, the good news is Mizzou has the football back. Bad news is they're at their own three-yard line 
and offensively, this has been the most ineffective we've seen them all season. Beatty trying to give him some breathing room, dives ahead to the six. Let's go down to Alyssa, see what she had to say with Coach Drinkwitz. Yeah, guys, I, I asked him what the message was at halftime, and he said, look, we, we did a couple of good things in that first half, but we keep shooting ourselves in the foot, making mistakes that are not going to win us this football game. we got to clean things up on both sides of the ball. I couldn't agree more, you know, when you look at it. They had some opportunities, there's no doubt. And you think about just the way they started this game. You get a penalty to the gates, an otherwise first down, it just ends up snowballing on them, going the opposite direction. And again, now so a couple of runs to the middle of the Aggie defense, and you're in your coming out offense. You hear about two minute offense, this is where you're backed up. You gotta get yourself some breathing room. You wanna get one first down. Find a way to get that first down so that at the very least it gives you a chance to capture some field position. It's an understatement to say it's a big third down right here to see if you can't convert and at least try to regain some of it because you're so deep in your negative territory. They select pump, surveys the whole field, has Dove open, Dove comes back to the ball to make the catch and move the chains. Huge pitch and catch that time to Toski Dove. So he's looking, working the left side, a little bit of a pump fake comes right back to the right side of the formation. 24 for Dove, Beatty gets up to the 36 yard line. That was just enough, that little pump, pump back to the left to hold Leon O'Neill in safety. And he found that soft spot just behind Jalen Jones on the boundary to Dove. And then a six yard gain by Beatty. So like keeps it himself, tries to dump it off, and does. Another good catch made by Dove, past the 40 for another first down. You know, they had a touchdown throw last week versus North Texas that kind of looked like that, rolling to his right. He just kind of stabs it in there. It's not a long throw, but enough to convert the sticks. Beatty, six yards on the last first down, 11 on this one. How about this start to the second half for Missouri? Going to the locker room. Didn't do anything with that last possession. You get a stop. You're backed up. You come off your own goal line. Look at this blocking up front. Nice push on the Aggie defensive line. Continue to work Beatty, he doesn't get anything this time. Johnson and Leal come in there to swallow him up, second down. Offense, offensive front for Missouri where they've been challenged a couple of times, keep their quarterback clean, but can they get this man going? You see the numbers, 17 touches, just the 68 yards after going for over 200 last week. Zalak looks around and overthrows his receiver way too tall for Dove. Had all day, it was great protection. They only brought four and Dove just sits down and Bazelak Bez just let that ball get away from him, air mailed it. A little bit of frustration there at wide receiver. That ball just got away from Bazelak, good five yards above Dove's head. Those are the numbers for Basilak, and he's just four of nine on third down today. Plenty of time again. An underneath throw that'll only get to the 45 yard line for Dove. It's fourth down. Mizzou's down three touchdown stench. It is the third quarter, it's fourth and seven. I would think the they're, offense would stay out there. Yeah, they, they are. I, I didn't see, I'm, I was looking at Coach Drinkwitz all the way. He didn't even look up from his call sheet. He went right to that call sheet. Your defense got a stop. They forced a couple of punts now. Trust it in plus territory. He's targeted Dove a bunch 
There's movement. This could be a free play. It's incomplete to Chisholm, but the free play leads to another flag. Appeared that AM was off sides and then committed pass interference. Once again, seemingly on Jalen Jones. It looked like maybe they caught Michael Clemens in the neutral zone. Two fouls on the play, offside. Defense number two will be declined. Defensive pass interference, number 17, that'll be accepted. The ball will be placed in spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Wow, I'll tell you what, we've seen some pass interference calls in this game bail out both these offenses. On third downs, and this time on fourth down, Jalen Jones called twice now for pass interference. And Michael Clemens, number two for AM, he's been getting a great jump on the snap count. That time was just a little early. Fake to Beatty, and then another dump off. And this is big. Daniel Parker with more flags on the field inside the 25 yard line. Block in the back, offense number seven. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Dominic Lovett coming in there. It didn't look necessary. Watch this. Yeah, he ends up. He's blocking Jalen Jones in the back. Then he gets blown up for the effort by Parker. Big body coming in there. Love it getting a, it's a coaching opportunity, right? Cost your offense. You know, Drinkwitz talked about it with Alyssa at halftime. You know, we just got to quit shooting ourselves in the foot. You got a great drive going here. Then you back yourself up with a play like that. He's a like one on one ball. Caught Dove again, who's been terrific on this drive, did a great job of timing his jump and came down with the football. You said it. Great job of boxing out the defender. Working against Tyreek Chapel. The safety help didn't get there in time to dislodge the ball from Leon O'Neal and another. Downfield reception for Toski Dove. He ignited this series earlier. As you see Michael Clemens, who was called for offsides earlier, shaking up at the end of that play. 26 yard completion to Dove as Clemens is being tended to. Eli Drinkwitz wasn't happy with his third down offense today. It's been terrific coming in. The red zone has been outstanding. And yeah, we talked about this yesterday in the call, and he said, I appreciate you mentioning the kneel down because we're really 20 for 20 with 17 touchdowns and three field goals. No empty possessions other than the kneel down when the game was over against the Mean Green last week. It's been very impressive by the Missouri offense. They have executed well when they've been able to get it into the red zone. Offensively in general this season, it hasn't been the issue. The difficulty's been on the defensive side of the ball today. They've had a hard time moving the ball with any level of consistency. They put together a great drive here. You think about that stop by the defense, narrowly so, resulted in a fourth and one. AM punts it away, and you've got about a 97 yard field. And right now, you've been able to drive it to the opposite red zone. Can they capitalize? And they've been the best team in this conference in converting red zone possessions into touchdowns turn this into a two possession ball game if they're able to convert. 13 yard line is where Missouri will snap this one. Basilak has been looking for Dove all possession. With some Beatty mixed in. And he's inside the 10 out at the eight. This run so hard. I mean, that could have been a negative yardage play. The Aggies brought pressure from the third level. So you bring your safety all the way down. He's trying to run down Beatty from the backside. 
Instead, he's able to skip to the line of scrimmage and pick up yardage. This is the 14th play of the drive, second and five. Mizzou from the Aggie seven. Beatty. Lucky to get near the line of scrimmage again. Andre White running with him and tackling him. Third down. Penetration again right there at the point. Beatty's just fending off defenders in his own backfield. Coming into this half. He's in there thinking, how do you get the ball to your best player more often versus this defense? Well, they've been able to do it largely in the run game here on this drive. Does he get it again to try to get a conversion? It's definitely four down territory. It's Lovett out of the backfield, into the end zone. Call by Drinkwitz there, catching the Aggie defense off guard. Fake it to Beatty that time. Got a blocker out wide, didn't need it. He's out there playing two-hand touch, just tagging defenders. Love it, just showing that speed to get all the way around the defense and into the end zone. Quite the start here in the third quarter for Mizzou. Well, everybody says Dominic Love it, the true freshman from East St. Louis has the potential to be a Mizzou game breaker. Out of the backfield on an end around, he gets his first collegiate touchdown. Three updates next time. Florida and LSU, Auburn and Arkansas, both in some and Mizzou has gotten their second touchdown of the game. Now 28-14 with Ketting kicking it through the end zone again. Can that Mizzou defense keep things going? Steve Wilkes, the defensive coordinator for Mizzou, lived in Charlotte for a long time as an associate head coach, was the defensive coordinator there for the Panthers in 2017. That led to him being the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals in 2018. It didn't last long though. He went to become the Browns defensive coordinator in 2019. He moved back to Charlotte, got out of the game last year before Eli Drinkwitz pleaded with him to come coach some college ball here in Como, and we know he's got a big job in front of him trying to get this defense together. Yeah, it's been a challenge, there's no doubt. And you know, the adjustment to the college game as well, and some of the college offenses that frankly are unique to this level. Kelzadig to Weidemeyer, and the big tight end gets more than 10 on first down. Alyssa. Every job is up for grabs, it seems, on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Coach Wilkes understands that he's part of rebuilding this culture here at Missouri. And if you remember what this team looked like last year, I feel like week in and week out, no matter the result, this was a Missouri Tiger team that always played very physical. Coach Drinkwitz said that they're upping the ante constantly at practice, actually redoing the depth chart picking guys who are going with the ones and twos the next day based on how they performed at practice the day before. So constantly competing for playing time. Spiller with the carry there, tackled by Blaze Aldridge on that play. And Aldridge is one of the guys that is not starting anymore. Chad Bailey has started the last couple of weeks. To Alyssa's point, that's one of the position battles has been up for grabs on a day-by-day -day basis. Yeah, the whole idea was them to kind of reintroduce that edge. They wanted to play with that, that competitive edge throughout the week, so it carried into game day. This is a good ball out to Lane, and Chase is into Mizzou territory. It's an 11-yard completion. It, the thing for Mizzou is, on defense, it's going to take years for them to become a finished product as you see new defensive line coach Al Davis and Steve Wilkes told us this yesterday in the call next week the open week critical to go and recruit and get a lot of players from around this area to buy into what they're doing with this program they're players on Texas A&M side of the ball that are from this area most notably Antonio Johnson Wilkes is going to try to get those guys to stay home they almost get to Calzada, and they do. He falls down back at the 35. Martez Manuel on a jailbreak blitz got back there. Starting to heat him up a little bit. 
Almost got to him on that first down throw earlier in this drive. Fathery does not get out and get enough of the rush. And instead, you could see it right tackle, just swing and a miss. He was late with his eyes. And instead, you see Calzada, and sometimes you just got to throw it away. Get rid of that football. He had two opportunities and didn't do it. That's the first sack by Mizzou today. Negative 17 yards, a big one. Calzada barely gets it off, wants to dump it off, and he's lucky it didn't get picked off. A player did come down, and here comes the late flag. Anaya Smith was laying on the ground. He was a, looked like he was effectively tackled. It was obvious they're setting up a screen here. Watch Spiller try to leak out, and he just gets tackled. Couldn't tell if it looked like. Holding on the defense, number 58. Okay. 10 yard company from the previous spot. Remain second down. Yeah, Makai Wingo, so he, he felt. Spiller trying to leak out and set up that screen, and he just grabbed it. I'm just going to go ahead and tackle you before you get the ball. Watch Spiller try to leak out and see Wingo right there. Reach out and just tackle him. You know, Blaze Aldridge, if he's got his eyes up, that could be a pick going the other way. Either, either way, the flags came out from all over the place. That is a giant penalty. Yeah. Because instead of third and 27, it is second and 17. And AM needs to get to the Mizzou 38. Calzada to the sidelines. It's incomplete. Preston did catch it, but he was out of bounds. He's lucky that Preston even caught it. It looked like this ball was going to get picked. Watch underneath. One more step. Looked like that ball could have been going the other direction as it was. Did not get there in time. Huge that that call on Wingo was holding. Incidentally, no automatic first downs on that call. AM two for five on third down, 0 for their last three. Across the middle, it's a good ball to Anaya Smith. First down to Aggies at the Mizzou 34. Mizzou had elected to heat up Calzada a couple of times. This time they decided to play coverage. They just rushed four. The protection was excellent. Calzada has plenty of time. Look at this pocket. That is a picture. And he's just waiting for Smith to clear out right over the ball in the middle of the field. 21 yard completion to the junior from Missouri City, Texas. Spiller, not much going there. Nice play by Aldridge. Fight through the block. She had two pullers coming over to that side of the line. Aldridge played the block, got the tackle. You see Myers coming off, kind of holding that left arm. Not good to see, but a nice play by Aldridge right at the line of scrimmage. Myers off the field, so is Spiller. A-chain's in there at the top of your screen. Calzada goes to the bottom instead, and Preston, nice turn and catch. And Jalen's near first down. It's enough to move the chains. Another really nice pocket by this offensive front. The Mizzou not getting there with just the four rushers. That's clean. As you mentioned, Preston just circles back inside, picks up another four or five yards and enough for that first down. A couple different times during this drive, looked like Mizzou was about to get off the field and now the Aggies are threatening. Timeout, Texas A&M. First time out this half. 3.56 left in the third quarter with the Aggies up 28-14 in driving. SEC Network Football, presented by Allstate, is brought to you by new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. Wow. In Fayetteville, yeah, Auburn's won five in a row in that series. Here, 
Aggies on the ninth play of their drive, threatening inside the red zone now to the 16-yard line. Goes A-chain again. Aggies have been running all over the Missouri Tigers today. They have over 200 rushing yards with that carry. Isaiah Spiller starting out. A-chain comes in there. Haven't seen them in the backfield together in this game. You know, A&M will jump into that two-back offense. First down for A-chain. The offensive line pushed that Missouri front to the first down marker as A-chain even got the football. Yeah, that's the thing. That's been a big issue throughout this game is the yards before contact. You hear about yards after contact, where you're breaking tackles, running through arm tackles. Not the case largely in this game, albeit you know, Mizzou did a much better job of the opening possession for A&M to start this half. Still get a nice push up front. A-Chain will try the left side and look at the speed. Staying in bounds inside the one. And now he's spinning towards the goal line as he was nearing the boundary. And the ball was in his right hand, it looked like. The only reason I bring that up is, is there a chance that when he spun, he's already in the end zone. He stops right there. Nah. Uh, he spun a lot tighter than I thought. Might be delaying the inevitable here, Stinch. On a first and goal from the one. Do they give it to him again? Yes, they do. Touchdown. Touchdown. Could be a costly drive. As you look down there, Bryce Foster. It looks like the AM center is down on the field. He was already forced in to the lineup to start the season. An injury to Luke Matthews in camp. An impressive drive, to be sure, by AM there. Needed to answer. See Bryce Foster holding his left leg. Yeah, you don't want to see that. As dominant as this offensive line has been today, as solid as they were last Saturday night, they finally have found their groove with the right five, and then you have an injury like this. Well, we just said, you know, earlier on, five different offensive line lineups. It looks like he's going to be okay. You almost wonder if he got stepped on or kicked. A lot of stuff happens in the middle of those lines. But the last thing one is thing they want is to have to reshuffle. Because I would I would guess there's a chance that Kenyon Green could move to center. He's played center before, would be his fifth different position. Why not? Yeah. Hit for the cycle. Small makes it a three touchdown game again. That was all Devon A chain. First his feet took down the pylon cam and then from the doorstep he scores again the Aggie offensive line plowing in front of the Aggie running backs score here in Como today on a beautiful Saturday in the show me state that Aggie offensive line has shown us something today with two tailbacks behind them both running for over 100 yards, Devon A-Chain and Isaiah Spiller. Let's check on the other games that are going on in the SEC with Peter Burns. Time once again for the AT&T 5G Studio Update. LSU had been struggling running the ball after a 40-yard touchdown pass from Ty Davis-Price. Anthony Richardson gets back in, starting quarterback, 35-28. Just another random LSU uh, Florida game, boys. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you always get that with those two. Again, a little strange to get used to them playing at noon Eastern time. That is odd, that's for sure. Doesn't feel normal. Here, Mizzou dumps it off to Beatty. That play works to perfection with the big boys running all the way down the field into AM territory. Case Cook, he had some speed on him there as Beatty picked up 34. Nice ball handling, a lot to see. You know, they got out there, spun under center. Gives the Aggie defense something different to look at and leaks Beatty behind the convoy. 
Longest play of the game for Mizzou. This one doesn't work as well. Aaron Hansford greets the other number one immediately. So far, Mizzou moving the football well here in the third quarter. That time off the explosive play on the screen pass to open up this possession. Well executed along the boundary to get into plus territory. It's a loss of two. Last time Mizzou had it, it went on a 14-play, 97-yard drive. Dump off to the 40. Not much doing again. Love it, who got the touchdown on the last drive, gets a couple. Nice tackle that time by Cooper. You're coming up at linebacker, trying to make a play. We've seen Love it, as you mentioned. If he shakes loose of that first tackler, that guy's a playmaker in space, not just an inline runner to where he gets behind defenses, but if he breaks the tackle, he's got speed enough to make you hurt after the catch. to get to the 31. They change the play to a run, and Hansford's in the backfield with Beatty for a loss. Kind of going to the Aggie playbook that time offensively. A handoff, and instead you saw Aggie, the Aggies dialed up, edge pressure both, Damani Richardson comes, Antonio Johnson was coming from the opposite side. You see that that was the difference, penetrating that offensive backfield to get the negative yardage play. A wasted opportunity. You gain the field position, sure, off that screen pass to Tyler Beatty, but then the drive stalls when they got into Aggie territory. And you see there the first five drives netted almost no yardage. The last five, they've averaged over 40 yards. McKinnis, punt goes sideways out of bounds at the 14-yard line. McKinnis held on to that ball and almost put his fingers um, as if he was about to try to spin it for a first down, but he does, he does kick it away with two seconds to go in the third quarter. He wanted to feel the laces there just for a second. <laughs> it's kind of like that, the laces matter for these kickers. You saw that game last night, Clemson-Syracuse. Got a kicker kicking the laces of the ball. The ball misses, of course. Otherwise, Syracuse with an opportunity to get the upset in the Carrier Dome. They didn't. Laces out, Dan. <laughs> Boy, that Clemson offense does not look like the same thing. No. We have seen the last few years. Last play of the third quarter. And Isaiah Spiller, who's gone over 100 yards rushing for the 14th time in his career, Tacks on a few more. The Aggies are back in the top 25 after beating number one Alabama last week. They're up three touchdowns on Mizzou today. A&M up 35 to 14 over the Missouri Tigers. And guys, when you talk about this Texas A&M defense, Leon O'Neill has been a huge part of it. He was last week against Alabama. There was a play where he chased down the ball carrier while laying out a blocker at the same time, eventually made the tackle. I got to catch up with him this week, and I talked to him about what he's tried to work on getting better at. For him, it's been pass coverage. I'll wait till this play to tell you what he did over the summer to get better. Spiller. Past the 30, up to the 35, Alyssa. He's uh, helped provide a lot of juice, certainly, to the offensive side of the ball. This A&M team really feeds off of each other. But how about this? Over the summer, Monday through Friday, he was up at 5 a.m. to work out. Some variations of track work, 1500s, 200s. On Fridays, he would do 40 hills. And then before all that, he, he would do all that before going to team workout. So uh, kind of like Stinch's workout plan, I think, during the week. Doing so a lot similar. of sprints, a lot of cardio, and then some weightlifting with the team. Yeah, got lots of hills. Very passionate about my cardio work. That's amazing. I mean, the 5 a.m. too, as you see Isaiah Spiller leaving the game, took a shot at the end of that run. Got really rocked after a great run. It took a big shot there. Leon O'Neill, no doubt, a leader on this Aggie football team. Got 18 yards. A chain. I tell you, they they usually, the defense has won the play a couple of times. His speed has just gotten positive yardage. Let's see what happened to Spiller. Nice run. And, oh yeah, Sean Robinson coming in there. And, 
not a defenseless player at that point in time. We've seen flags come out this year on that. I don't know if he used the crown of the helmet or not. Looked like maybe he lowered his head. Either way, it looks like Spiller's ready to go back into the game and is fine. He runs straight ahead this time, and A-Chain will get a couple. You noticed, uh-oh, getting a little chippy. Yeah. Yeah, Taylor's kind of, there's been a couple of snaps there towards the end where there's been a, some extracurricular activity. That time, Trajan Jeffcoat, who's now going to be substituted out of the game. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 18, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's number 18's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Oh yeah, so you see it right there. He's, he's got his hands all up in Max Wright's helmet first and then well after the whistle, just wants to keep at it. Could have had a hands to the face a couple of times as he's getting coached up over there by new defensive line coach Al Davis. Did you see those penalties? Season high, yeah. I, I'm, sh I'm sure that Coach Davis is saying, hey, you're arguably our best player, most experienced player. We need you to keep your head more than anybody else. Yep. No, it's a great point. You know, you got to be the leader, something that we can point towards as this is how you do it. That isn't it. You know, definitely some frustration demonstrated that time by Jeffco. Alzada's in trouble. Spins out of there. What a play. Finds Max Wright for his second catch of the season for eight yards. Some nice escapability that time by Calzada. He ended up taking a big sack earlier because he was able to keep a play alive. Isaiah McGuire getting in there again. Calzada keeps his eyes up downfield, hits Max Wright with a strike right there on the sideline. He's got 13 completions now to eight different wide receivers. Jimbo Fisher said about Calzada, he just needs more saddle time. A-chain might get a yard. It's gonna be third and short. What's happening in those other SEC games, PB? Taylor, uh, LSU Florida has turned into Ole Miss Tennessee, but during the day, how about this? Anthony Richardson finds Damian Pierce, 35-35 touchdowns in four of the last five Gator drives. Man. Eye on what's happening there. They did give A chain enough to move the chain, so it's a first down here down to the Mizzou 32. Spiller is back in the game, so evidently answered all the questions he had to, to be allowed back on the field and gets the ball immediately inside the 30 yard line. You know, Stinch, back to Calzada for a second. I love that. Jim, but most people say he needs more seat time, he needs more reps. Jimbo playing to the crowd, he needs more saddle time. <laughs> That's such a Texas answer, right? Texas A&M is sitting there going to the fan base. Yeah, yeah. He's got to have more time in that saddle. It makes sense. I mean, you lose Haynes King in the Colorado game. That's a shock to your offensive system, to be sure. Not easy to just make that quick switch, especially after four years of Kellen Mond and the stability they've had at quarterback. It was a bullet, but good defense as Preston is covered up there. It'll be second down and seven. DJ Jackson, the freshman from Dallas on the coverage. One thing Calzada has been working on that Daryl Dickey, the offensive coordinator, was telling me about before the game is putting a little bit more touch on the ball. Throws an absolute bullet. Yeah, he's definitely got a hose. We've seen that a couple of times. Some of the touch passes, touch throws have been difficult for him to kind of dial it in, not only the accuracy, but the pacing of the ball. Aggies need to get to the Mizzou 22. Calzada drifts back against his body to the end zone, incomplete. There aren't any flags either. He's looking for Demond Demas. And Caleb Evans was there with him stride for stride. Yeah, I think Calzada's going to want this one back because he's got Anaya Smith in the slot all the way. They said he goes outside. Demas trying to fight back to that football. He gets hammered. Does Calzada as he lets go of this football. And if anything, it should have been a flag on Demas, maybe. 
Yeah, yeah, both those guys tangled up in it. If he throws it to Anaya Smith, it's a touchdown in the slot. 47-yard field goal. A little trouble with the, with the snap, but it is no good. It's short Seth Small again. Connor Choate tried to get it back there to Constantino. No good. That's too SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. Save money like a champion with Allstate. There's Seth Small after the last drive. Coming up short on the 47-yard field goal. And now on an option toss to love it. Love it gets near a first down and moves. See if they, yep, first down for Mizzou up to the 39 yard line. Missouri down three touchdowns to Texas A&M with 11 17 to go in the game. Tigers struggled mightily on offense in the first half, but have found a little bit of a rhythm in the second. They definitely offensively have been able to move the ball better. Last drive stalling once they pass midfield. Make to Beatty, dump off to Parker. And Daniel gets ahead for seven more. Basilex tried that play and it's been effective several times this season. Yeah, I, you know, I've been a fan of that, you know, moving this pocket a little bit. You can't live in it, right? You can't boot and make it all the way down the field. And at the same time, it has been effective seemingly for the Missouri offense. Open things up a little bit. They've certainly opened it up in the third quarter, throwing the ball downfield, testing the secondary. Too tall over the head of Hay. He's like being helped up once again at the end of that play. Popped a couple of times today. As he throws this ball and, oh man. It, We've seen flags come out on hits like, just like that. That ball was clearly gone. Shamar Turner, freshman from DeSoto, Texas, missed the last two games back today. Last week, that AM Aggie defense hit Bryce Young 17 times on 52 dropbacks. That's a lot. They were able to get to the quarterback. Bazelak had completed seven in a row, but now two straight incompletions. Trying to get it to Beatty. How many times have we seen this today? Where a running back's got a chance to make a catch and he's got open field in front of him. Beatty makes that catch cleanly. It's a first down easy. Jalen Jones, the only defender in the vicinity, just couldn't corral that pass. Shocking to see Beatty drop it though. He, he's been money out of the backfield all season. Have to go for it, down three touchdowns. Five of eight this season on fourth down. Aggie defense has been excellent on fourth down this season. Did concede one due to penalty. First down, Mizzou. And a strike. And Looper with the catch. Strike that time for Bazelak. It goes back to Chance Looper. You harken back to that very first offensive series. Ball's a little bit behind. Looper couldn't come up with it that time. Clutch catch to get the yardage needed and convert the sticks to keep this drive going. like from a muddy pocket and he throws it into traffic. Aaron Hansford who's flashed several times today with the deflection. Nice play by Hansford. Watch him time his break. Oh, a little bit early, but I'll, I'm okay with no call that time, especially given some of these other calls or no calls rather. And Aaron Hansford converted receiver. Playing inside linebacker for the Aggies. Yeah, that's right, he started 15 games at linebacker the last two seasons after switching over from receiver. Beatty 
Doesn't get much. Darius Jones. See some Aggie defensive linemen that are getting some playing time for the first time today. Johnson, Tyree Johnson takes a knee. So Johnson, the senior from Washington, will take a break. A&M up three touchdowns looking for their fifth win. Remember, coming up, SEC football final tonight. Dari, Chiz, CD, Benjamin Watson. Take you through the biggest stories of the day and break all the games down. 10.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. 9.18 left in the fourth quarter. Clock starts running after Tyree Johnson was helped to the sideline. Bazelak drifts back, pumps, and it's caught down at the 36-yard line. That's J.J. Hester for a gain of 13. Good body control by J.J. Hester because he has to reach back behind him. Scramble drill, scramble rules. Can't even show you the replay. They go so fast. Looper gets this one for a few yards. Looper kind of double clutch that catch. Able to still maintain possession. But you're right, quick to the line. A little bit of urgency now in the Missouri offense as they now uh, throttle it back. Aggies have not played here in eight years. Mizzou has won seven of the last nine meetings in this series. Beatty is hammered by Edger and Cooper. That was a heck of a trigger by Edger and Cooper. Watch 45. That's a full head of steam. Luke Griffin was trying to climb up to the second level, did not get there in time. You know, Coach Elko's looking for like the next great Aggie linebacker. It, it's early, he's a true freshman, but that's a career high eighth tackle for Edger and Cooper. Third and nine, Dawson Downing standing next to Basilak. Basilak running for his life as Tyree Johnson escorted him to the sideline, third down, fourth down. Stiff arm there, got it off the face mask, kind of slid it over. And they're over there talking about whether or not he's well outside the pocket. They're going to call it intentional grounding. Uh, Evidently, it, I guess the ball did not make it to the line of scrimmage. We'll take a look, another look at this. Clearly outside the tackle box. I mean, that's not up for debate. The ball doesn't get. Yeah, it's definitely outside the tackle box. The ball must not have made it back to the line of scrimmage. The officials gathered and were discussing it. But that ball did not make it all the way back to the line of scrimmage. The pressure from Tyree Johnson forcing that intentional grounding. So another pit punt for McKinnis on fourth and 19. Angles it out of bounds with 7.21 to go. Aggies on the verge of another victory. In the SEC, played four times as non-conference opponents, eight times as members of the Big 12, and this is their fourth meeting as SEC opponents, first time since 2014. Mizzou had those two great seasons in 2013 and 14 when yeah. Gary Pinkle and the Tigers won the SEC East. Spiller still in the game, still getting first downs. 
all the way out past the 30-yard line. Continues to run hard. But those are the only two seasons where Mizzou finished with a winning conference record. They've had some five and five. That was their record last year against 10 conference opponents. They've gone four and four in league play. But those are the only two years, Stinch, where they finished above 500. And you think back to those teams and the talent that they had, especially a wide receiver. I can remember, you know, that lineup. Huge receivers that could run. And as you see A&M, we talked about earlier, it would be a costly loss if Bryce Foster were injured. This is Kenyon Green, who we've mentioned, has played just about every position on the offensive front this season. And he is shaken up at the end of this play. Green was able to, Foster rather, was able to come back in the game. Looks like he's okay. They're not even helping him out. That's. Always a good sign. Going back to what you were saying about Mizzou and having those great receivers back at the beginning of their tenure in the SEC, clearly they're in a transition mode now. You've got a second-year head coach in Eli Drinkwitz, a first-year defensive coordinator in Steve Wilkes, and you don't want to tell fan bases, patient, be patient, because you hear so much of that these days. But it will. It's going to take some recruiting classes for them to find NFL prospects like they had when Gary Pinkle and the Tigers came into the Big 12. And you think, you know, in the age of the transfer portal and immediate eligibility, you know, help can be a couple of transfers away. I mean, you think about this defense alone, the defensive line, front seven players, Trey Williams and Markel Lutze, they're playing right now for Arkansas. They're still playing college ball, just not for Mizzou any longer. You have to think that they would have a big role on this defense. Nick Bolton, oh, he's obviously. He's a tackling machine. You know, so it's not easy to replace a Nick Bolton, much less losing a couple other big bodies and producers among your front seven players. Bolton starting for the Chiefs to start the season. Another team in this state that's not had the kind of start they wanted this year. Spiller gets to the 35-yard line. And, and meanwhile, for, for Texas A&M, I know their fans are, are disappointed with what they've seen so far this year against Colorado, against Arkansas, against Mississippi State, and then you have this massive victory, unexpected win last week against the number one team in the country. But they have been ravaged by injuries on the offensive line at quarterback in the secondary. Several receivers are out, including yeah. Caleb Chapman. And this is a team that has not had a full deck from which to work with. No, it's agreed. And you think about you already knew you are going to be transitioning somewhat, especially a quarterback. King throws all the way down the field, and it's incomplete as he was looking for Demas. Wherever fun happens. Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. Aggies punt after Calzada goes off the field and Coach Fisher always coaching his quarterbacks up. Yes, just gently encouraging them there on the <laughs> Is that sideline. what that is? Yep, that's a gentle encouragement. Constantino takes a bad snap and fields it and gets off a great punt. Bobbled, but Boo Smith is able to keep it with him. Mizzou will have it back on offense. Such an arm. You just see throws like that. I know you were there last week, Stench, and you think this guy should be able to do it all. It's a drop for Chance Looper. Second down. So that game with Florida and LSU is crazy. Tied at 42. Unreal. Shout out to the Auburn Tigers. Up two touchdowns on Arkansas towards the end of that game. After what Georgia did to Auburn last week, it's a real sign Brian Harson's got control of that program going to Fayetteville and getting a win like that. Yeah, no folding of the tent, that's for sure. And an Arkansas team that's put together some nice wins this season. Hay grabs it at the 30. Yeah, that really is impressive, you know, when you think about it, because there have been some games this season where 
you can allow one team to beat you twice. You know, they talk about the Alabama flu. You play Alabama and you lose two weeks in a row because it just takes that much out of you. Some flags come out. Trying to hit Nico Hay. What? False start. Offense number seven. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. But they bounce back. You know, it's a rivalry game. You got beaten at home. You got beaten badly at home. You come right back. You got to face a tough opponent in the West Division. The West Division is nuts, by the way. Completely nuts. I mean, you think about it. After Alabama, best team in the West Division is... I mean, Probably Texas A&M, in my opinion. Like, maybe some would say LSU. Maybe some would say LSU. Maybe some would say Auburn. That's the thing, right? I mean, there's, a, there's, a, I think there's plenty of people that could they make an argument for Ole Miss or Arkansas. Arkansas beat A&M. Um, Mississippi State did too. I, I think this. Going back to what we were saying a moment ago, A&M without a lot of players certainly is the fourth, fifth best team in the, in the West. But what, with this offensive line we've seen today, we saw last week against Alabama. I think they have the potential to be the second best team, if not the best. If Alabama loses one more game and the Aggies went out, guess who's going to Atlanta? It's a good point. Squeeze it out in that West Division. This West Division, I think almost everybody's beaten everybody when you look at it. It's like this round robin of teams that have gone around and beaten one another. Who would you go with, Ole Miss? I, I'm, as I said that, I'm sitting there going, who would I say? I, I, you know, I, you could say Ole Miss because they beat Arkansas by, what, a point? Over the head of Beatty. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the East is so much more defined, right? Vanderbilt is at the bottom. South Carolina maybe right after that. Missouri right after that. Tennessee, Florida are probably in that third and fourth spot. And the top two teams are playing in a few minutes. And I would not have thought that. Even after, you know, the way Florida played Alabama at home in the swamp, as closely as they did, it's a two-point loss. You're a two-point conversion away from tying it. I would have thought that they – that was nearly picked off by a &M, But they would – I would have thought Florida might have been the second-best team. Not now. I mean, not now. You know, with Kentucky knocking them off at home. You have to say it's the Wildcats. It'll be fascinating to see how things unfold here in a few minutes in Athens when the Wildcats take on the Dogs. Third and three. Hazelak runs out of the pocket, down the field. That should have been caught by Hester. Flag does come in and was almost picked off by Richardson off the carom. Richardson had that huge interception in the end zone last week. Holding offense number 50. Ten-yard penalty, previous spot. Repeat third down. Iron White, the right tackle. Yeah, you think back to the red zone woes of Alabama in that game versus A&M. You mentioned Richardson turning the tide away with that pick in the end zone. Saw one. Going against the Aggies today, red zone turnover. Fourth and 13. Basilak throws short, and the catch made by Lovett, but not enough. It's a turnover on downs. Excuse me, that was... Now this is fourth down. I mean, this is fourth down. That was third and 13. Fourth and three now for Mizzou. So timeout called with 2.58 left in the game. Timeout. Texas A&M, second timeout this half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Missouri about to fall to three and four on the season. 
next week off. Then they're at Vanderbilt in Nashville. They do host South Carolina here on November 13th. Host Florida at Arkansas. But they do they have three more current ranked opponents. Now Arkansas is going to fall out of the top 25 with their loss to Auburn today. And Florida could fall out if they lose to LSU. Play in Athens on, on November the 6th. It's going to be tough for Coach Drinkwitz to get to six wins. It's an, that's a really tough finishing slate, potentially. Now you look at it, you got opportunities there. You got an opportunity at Vandy. South Carolina is definitely an, an opportunity now. Georgia's, no question, a very difficult out at this point. You know, which version of Florida are you going to get? And on the fourth down, way over the head of his intended target now, a turnover on downs gives the ball back to A&M. Dove was wide open, too. And we've seen it a couple of times today with the ball just... Swinson, excuse me. Sails on a base lack twice now. Ball just jumps and gets high. On that fourth down, out of the timeout, they just can't convert. Long afternoon for the Missouri offense, certainly defensively. This is not the type of production they're used to generating. They'll finish potentially anyway with just under 330 yards of total offense. Mari Daniels, the freshman from Miami, checks in for the Aggies to finish the game off, and Daniels more hard running. It's just his fourth carry of the season. Picks up a few. The Aggies host South Carolina next Saturday night. Great opportunity for them to get to six and two on the season. And then in, in November, after an open week on October 30th, they have Auburn, they're at Ole Miss, host Prairie View A&M, and they're at LSU. Those are all winnable games. Now, Go to Oxford, go to Death Valley. Daniels wrapped up there. Sean Robinson still playing hard, gets in the backfield. But going into that Alabama game, I think Aggie fans thought that they were headed towards a five loss season somewhere like that. Now all of a sudden, maybe it'll bit more optimistic about what's going to happen by the end of the year. There's no question. I, I will say going into that Alabama game, as you see, a couple of Missouri Tigers limping off the field. I thought the Aggies had problems that were almost unfixable over the course of the season. Offensive line was a mess, couldn't get separation at receiver, erratic quarterback play. Daniels doesn't, or L.J. Johnson Jr., excuse me, on the carry, the freshman from Cypress, Texas, another tackle by Robinson. But a lot of that got righted. I mean, and, and it's taken some experimenting, there's no doubt, and the answers aren't all there just yet. I mean, we've seen it at linebackers still at A&M. You know, Adrian Cooper had some nice plays today, but you talked to Mike Elko and he says, communication's been an issue. We've had to reconfigure how we do that, how we call our defenses. So it's not a fully realized product, but it is much improved after those two losses. Ernest Crownover running hard right at the marker. And he got it. Heavy run downfield. And that'll do it. Aggies able to build on that victory last week. They didn't look distracted. They started fast in this game. They could have been off on the heels of a victory like that, but they weren't. And on their first true road game of the season, able to get a victory. Well, Texas A&M gets another victory and improves to five and two on the season with Jimbo Fisher Winning on the road in his first ever trip to Columbia, Missouri. Missouri falls to three and four. Zach Calzada, not his best today, but 
enough to get the job done. Handed it off quite a bit. Isaiah Spiller, 168 yards. Devon A-Chain with 124. A&M runs for near 300 yards in the game. And back down to the field in Alyssa. Coach, what did you think about the way your team was able to carry the momentum from last week? Well, I think here's the thing. I thought we'd come out really good. Then we hit a little low. Had a chance to put them away for a half on the pick, didn't we? And I was disappointed defensively. Offense, we come out and do an incomplete, get three and out, and then give up a 97-yard drive, which can't happen. But now the offense did respond with a big drive. So we're learning. We're still a long way from there. We left a lot on the table. Got to get better. What did you think about the way your backs ran the football today? I thought they ran hard. I thought they made some really good plays, and they're very dynamic. What will be the emphasis defensively this week ahead of next week? Well, I mean, I think we got to look at what they do. But, I mean, giving up some of the third down th throws right there on third and long and getting off the field there. and The run game, I thought we did a really good job except for one run. What would you think about Zach Calzada and another start, another win? I thought he started off really good. I thought we drifted. I think we missed some easy throws that we needed to hit to do. And there's still some cleanup things there. Thanks, Coach. Congrats. Thank you. Fifth straight true road win for Texas A&M all Isaiah by double too. figures. Thanks to Alyssa Lang, to Matt Stinchcomb, and our entire crew. I'm Taylor Zarzer. On a beautiful day at Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri, Texas A&M is tired of being known as an underdog. They want to be a blue blood in college football. Sure look like one today.